Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. It's good to have you here. <coughs> so just a couple of announcements. Um, our Zoom Bible study continues every Tuesday night. If you wish to join in, we're looking at the book of Acts and uh, what all happened there. And um, just send me an email to let me know you wish to be part of it, and I'll send you the link. Um, the, uh, oh yes, you're all aware we have coffee before worship with Trinity. We, uh, in this way, we can have coffee prepared as well. Our responsibility comes every other week. We are looking for people to prepare coffee, whatever little something to nibble on. doesn't have to be fancy. Um, we, um, it's actually rather easy because the church is already open because Trinity is having their worship, so you can slide right in whenever you need to. So please consider signing up for that. Also, I want to note, you will note that we have a short prayer list. This prayer list needs to be updated. We usually try to do that annually. If you wish for a name to be on the prayer list or if you want to stay on the prayer list, please let the office know by January 31st. That's uh, important for all who are wishing our prayers. I think I've covered everything I need to cover. Our service today begins with hymn number 521. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 4, hymn 521. Our opening dialogue is found in the bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask <coughs> from the Lord, this only do I see. I am well of my soul's soul, the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, and to see him in his steps. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent, and set me high on the wall. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, help us seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not forget the evil of our Savior. Our Kyrie is found on page 203. <laughs>
Lord God, your loving kindness always goes before us and follows after us. Summon us into your light and direct our steps in the ways of goodness that come through the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please proceed to the lesson. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning of verse 1. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the 10th verse. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Christ crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 4 beginning at the twelfth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when <coughs> Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and saddle of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus 
went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. That gospel lesson involving being called, it got me thinking about the time I explained in one of our confirmation classes how God has a way of filling our deepest hopes and dreams with things that God knows we are good at and things we actually can enjoy doing. The problem, of course, comes if we fall into the habit of planning our own course and not consulting God on the matter. And to show what I meant to those confirmands, I spoke of how as a child, I had a lot of dreams about what I wanted to be and do in the future. I mean, growing up on a farm, I liked to work with animals. I enjoyed the sowing and harvest. I wanted to be around water. Love being around water. I wanted to use my imagination. But most of all, because I loved books, just love books. I wanted to write and be published. I have often marveled at how an author can touch so many people, how they can spark others' imaginations, how they can influence conversations. I wanted to do that more than anything. That's what I wanted to do. Of course, as the years went by, that all kind of seemed like a pipe dream. Other than a few famous authors, who had ever heard of a Canadian writer that was able to make a decent living? Those were the days when our country was so overwhelmed from all the talent coming here and being sent here from south of the border that our own government felt they had to financially encourage those in the arts so that we could have Canadian content in our society. Remember that? Canadian content. How else do you think we ended up with Bob and Doug McKenzie in the Great White North? We needed Canadian content. And I found out recently that was why they started that segment. It was Canadian content. It wasn't going to work out for me, it seems. So then, my plan was to move on and find the, the fame and fortune that is to be found in the construction industry. We may want to note here that this was my plan for myself and had nothing to do with God's plan for me. Unfortunately, it took me a dozen years to figure it out, which is why I'm still not retired. In the meantime, I, from time to time, still tried my hand at writing, but you know nobody was interested. Things changed for me when I received what I considered to be a sign, even though it was the simplest of actions. It wasn't anything awesome or great. I was attending a civic convention, and it had a profound effect on me. And in, during that convention, I had a short conversation with the national bishop of the time, you know, and um, that was fine. But the next day, he approached me, and he handed me one of his little ELCIC lapel pins, you know, one of those cheap giveaway items that they have kicking around, probably a drawer fulls of them. And while it wasn't much, that one action, it hit me harder than 
and I realized it really struck me. And it began my considering ministry as a vocation. You know, I'm not even sure that man realized what he had done and perhaps what may happen. He may have unleashed on the church when he did that. <laughs> but we find something like that in our gospel today because it appears that Jesus was looking for a sign that it was time to change things and begin his ministry. And that sign, of course, was the arrest of John the Baptist. This is the point that Jesus left home in Nazareth and moved to Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee and started his ministry. I mean, effectively, from the message we hear this morning, he was picking up where John Lent left off. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. But that wasn't the only sign to someone in this reading today. For the disciples, Jesus' arrival in Capernaum was also a sign because he called out to them and they moved with Jesus, leaving what they had known behind. Today's gospel lesson includes the brothers James and John who it says they simply left their father mending the nets, which made me wonder what kind of a look was on Zebedee on his face. I mean, Jesus says, hey, come, follow me. I'll have you fish for people. And they stop what they're doing and leave. I mean, what was Zebedee thinking? Hey, where are you going? We've got work to do here. You're going to leave me an old man to handle this by myself? Of course, that's the thing about feeling a sure sign and following up on it. It can mean you leave whatever you have known and do something totally different. You don't have to just do that, though. A sure sign can also lead you to do something new, something you haven't tried before, something to experience. In my case, we packed up whatever we had and we moved from a rented house in the country to a small student apartment in the city of Waterloo. We went to the big city. I left behind carpentry, I became a university student. Something I had thought earlier was totally impossible for me to achieve. And once I finished my required university courses, and admittedly some of them were in writing and professional rhetoric, I entered seminary and I was expected each year to be a part of a different congregation and do the things that pastors do. They make you learn by doing there, which is like, you know, tossing you off a pier and telling you learn how to swim now. Um, you know, the uh, leading worship, preaching, counseling, teaching, that kind of thing. And after graduation, of course, I began in my first parish, and later I came here. But what has hit me over the the past couple of years is that by following God's plan of me discovering and making use of my talents rather than just going ahead with my own made up plan one of the things that happened along the way is I became a writer that was the very thing I had thought of wanting to do when I was still a child I was also using my imagination. I've been sowing seeds of the gospel. And through camp ministries, I've been hanging around water a fair bit. All the things, well maybe not every one of them, but most things I had originally wanted to be, I have now become. Except what's different is 
that it didn't come about the way I had pictured it, nor has it resulted in the way I may have pictured it. I'm, I'm not some renowned author, but I'm, I'm quite happy being known for some of the work I've done with things like articles and the Sudbury Star and Christine Busco and the Eternity for Today devotions. The thing is, when God called me, it wasn't in order that I might be glorified, but rather that God is the one who is glorified. I became better and succeeded once I let God lead the way down whatever road it would take and just put my own plans aside. Forget about that. Really, that seems to be the best kind of calling. Just let God lead. I'm not saying you need to be called to something astounding. <laughs> Hello, you might. I'm not saying that all your hopes and dreams will be answered. Although that's possible. I'm not even saying that you will even comprehend what your calling is at first if someone asks you to do something. But when you follow God's lead, you still have to make some decisions. It's not all laid out nicely for us. And you may not quite understand why you are going in a certain direction. It never occurred to me that as a pastor, I would be a writer. What I'm saying, though, is that by following the lead of God, who knows each of us better than we know ourselves, my experience is that you will discover amazing and wonderful things about yourself. While your calling may not be something you envisioned, it will be based on your interests, and your abilities, and it will be fulfilled. If you are indeed curious as to what you may be called to do next, I encourage you, look for signs. They're not always there. But you'd be surprised. Signs are not likely to be awe-inspiring or visions or anything like that. But you will know it when they hit you. Something will click. And you'll have a decision to make. Lastly, we should all realize that we too can be a bearer of a needed sign for someone else. When Jesus came to the apostles, he offered them something. So for someone else, a sign can be an inviting gesture. It could be a vocal request. Or it could give someone the opportunity to do something that they have a talent for and can find fulfilling. We do not know how or when we might inspire others. So I encourage you to take every chance you can to do that. Inspire others. This is how Jesus began. And we want to continue that tradition. So, may you know what you are called to do, whether it's long or short term. May you be fulfilled in doing it. And may you have the strength and courage to invite others to let God lead them in their callings as well. Amen. Let us confess our faith and the found in our religion in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He 
He said to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Feast of Christ be with you all. Now I most give you. you. Let us share a wave of peace with each other. Let us pray. Our offering prayers come in our bulletin. Blessed are you, O oh God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us the beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with the heavenly food. Prepare us to carry your love to honor your will in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we are able and turn to the great thanksgiving on page 200. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the God who faithfully brings forth justice and grace to your presence, God, bless you. Strengthen and uphold you today and always. Amen. And now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.